Today I'm going to teach you how to measure oxygen saturations. And to do that we need one of these, these are an oxygen probe. So we open that up, put in a finger, and we see that my oxygen saturations are currently 98% SpO2 saturations of peripheral oxygen in my finger and my current pulse rate PR is sometimes that settles down a bit if you leave it it kind of averages out over a period of time so my current pulse rate is I would say it's settling out at about 78, something like that. So we'll accept that, 80, 81. Okay, and that red line there is the pulse waveform as it goes through your fingers, which is also quite useful to see because if someone's got an irregular heart rate, for example, you can see that the, uh, the red graphic there is also um, irregular. So 97 sats, 85 heart rate. That's not bad, I'm in the relatively stressful situation of talking to you. <laughs> now, let's just see what, I'm lucky, I've got two. <clears throat> this one you have to turn it on first. That one's kind of upside down, let's see where we are on this one. So heart rate there is, this one says BPM, beats per minute. That's about 82, 83, and again my saturations there are 98%. And instead of giving a graphic, this one gives you a that bar going up and down, which is also quite useful. Every time a pulse goes through, it's giving you that bar. Now what these things are doing is they have a little light in there, you can see. And you can see it's uh, pulsating, flickering because it flickers uh, on and off between red and infrared and that goes through your finger and it's measured on a, a detector uh, on the other side you can't really see it there there's a detector in there that measures it yeah, there you can just see it there look that's the detector down there so that's how these things are working now these used to be really expensive but now they're dirt cheap i mean they're about um well dirt cheap relatively cheap <clears throat> about 20 pounds I have no vested interest, <laughs> but it's the sort of thing you could afford at, at home quite easily. And it's called pulse oximetry. And it's described as the, uh, the fifth vital sign. So the other vital signs are, the first four are heart rate, blood pressure, respiratory rate, and uh, temperature. <laughs> Right, so so we, we call this TPRBP, so, so that the vital signs are TPRBP. TPRBP. So temperature, pulse, respiration, blood pressure, and now to add that we're adding oxygen saturations. So we've got these. So anytime you come into hospital now, we're going to do these to you. I'll do these to you as virtually as soon as you get through the door. You'll have your observations recorded to get that basic physiological information and what this is measuring is is oxygen saturations spo2 the oxygen saturations in the periphery and the, the fingers are a periphery of course and the normal range and tend to find i've done this on hundreds of young fit students and they, they tend to be in this kind of range mostly 95 to 100 is kind of normal in the clinical situation we might get start getting a bit concerned if they drop below 90 depending very much on the patient background, whether we get concerned or not. Now, I think I'll just show you now what's happening here. So, as you probably know, you have red blood cells. So we have red blood cells here, the erythrocytes. So these are the red cells. These are the red cells here. So there we have the, the red blood cells. There's about 5 million of these per cubic millimetre of blood. And they're biconcaved discs. So you look at it from the side, they're kind of like this. 
And that's why they appear darker on the outside and lighter on the inside. Now, if you'd like to see your red blood cells, you can do quite easily. Just go to an open window and sit and sort of gaze up into the, into the sky, not into the sun so you damage your eyes, but just where it's light and just let your focus drift. And then you'll start seeing these little things floating over your vision when your vision's out of focus and they're called red cell ghosts. And they're the red cells going through your blood vessels in your retina. They don't look red because an individual cell is too small to look red uh, through your eyes like that. But you can see that they're, um, you can see that they're, they, look like, they look a bit like this. And you can see them drifting in front of your eyes. Now, the point is about these, these, um, these red cells is the erythrocytes. Erythro is medical for uh, red. And cytes is cell. So these are the red cells. And they contain haemoglobin. <clears throat> now, the haemoglobin is actually the red pigment. The reason they're red is they contain haemoglobin, the HB. And in the States, you don't put in the A. So these contain haemoglobin, and each and the billions, millions of haemoglobin molecules in those cells, um, each of those molecules of haemoglobin can carry four molecules of oxygen. So if we have a, if we have a molecule of uh, haemoglobin here, imagine that's a molecule of haemoglobin. This has got space for one, two, three, four molecules of oxygen. It can carry four molecules of oxygen at a time. One, two, three, four. Each molecule of oxygen being an O2. It's what we call a diatomic molecule. Now, what this probe does, what the probe does is it shines the light through your blood, in your blood vessels, and it registers the amount of haemoglobin that has got oxygen in it, and that's called oxyhemoglobin and it registers the amount of haemoglobin which does not have oxygen in it. That's deoxyhemoglobin. So you might get the odd haemoglobin molecule that's not full. It's only got three oxygen molecules. So this calculates an average. So if every haemoglobin molecule is completely full of oxygen, that means your blood is 100% saturated, which is amazing. And take a few deep breaths and for most people you go up to that. So that is 100% saturation. That would mean that every single haemoglobin molecule has got an oxygen being carried with it. So that's what it's telling. It's how much oxygen is in your arterial blood. Now this is massively important because if there's a deficiency in the amount of oxygen in the blood, that's called hypoxemia. H-Y-P-O. Hypo means low. Hypo, low. Pose used to be kept under the bed, they're low. Emia, in the blood. And again, if you're in the States, you don't put the A in. Now, hypoxemia, the purpose of the, oxy the, purpose of the red cells and the haemoglobin is to carry the oxygen to the tissues. So it could be your fingers, it could be your brain, it could be your kidneys, it could be your toes, it could be your tongue, it could be your nose, doesn't matter what it is, they all need oxygen. And if they don't get enough, that causes hypoxia. So hypoxemia, which is deficiency of oxygen in the blood, will lead to deficiency of oxygen in the tissues. And this will lead to tissue damage. Now, in different tissues, there'll be damage occurring at different times, but it would always lead to tissue damage. So what we say is oxygen lack first stops the machine. So it will stop the machine working. Then it will wreck the machinery. So if there's not enough oxygen to your brain, your brain will stop working, you'll become unconscious. And then if it's prolonged, your brain will be wrecked. The, the hypoxia will cause permanent brain damage. So it's the number, four oxygen molecules uh, per haemoglobin molecule. It's the saturations of that. That's what you're measuring. Oxygen saturation, SpO2. And there's absolutely no reason now with the current prices why you shouldn't have one of these at home. I mean, they're, they're so cheap now. Absolutely brilliant little things. My saturations are currently 98 <laughs> and my heart rate is about 80. That's not too bad. 
it's not too bad. <clears throat> so this is the fifth vital sign. So the first four were temperature, pulse and respiration. Uh, temperature, pulse, respiration, BP. We've been doing, I've been doing those pretty well, every, well probably every day in my life since I was 18. <laughs> um, uh, TPR, BP. And uh, now the fifth vital sign, now we have these oxygen saturation probes as the oxygen sats. So no basic set of observations is now complete without oxygen saturations. Now we've always known that if the amount of oxygen in the blood is very low, you kind of go with the colour of that pen, you go a bit blue. And this blue discoloration is called cyanosis. So typically someone might be cut cyanos when the oxygen saturations go down into the 70s which is already quite low, <clears throat> but some people don't become cyanose until the saturations get down to, to 97, so that's really quite low if we consider what mine is at the moment. It's the trouble with these things, you keep checking, <laughs> you, get, you get kind of interested in it. How are we doing now? Oh, my saturations are 98, <clears throat> so that's fine, they're 98. <laughs> um, so 67 would mean the tissues aren't getting enough oxygen. But it's not till you get to this level that you become blue and cyanose, which is the classic sign of uh, hypoxemia. So if you've got central cyanosis, like your lips, your neck, your chest, tongue, <clears throat> that means your saturations are already actually quite dangerously low. Now, other features you might get with hypoxemia, um, shortness of breath, tachycardia, tachypnea, dyspnea, sweaty. Let's see what these means. So shortness of breath is that just that. You feel sh an objective feeling of being short of breath. Tachypnea, T-A-C-H-Y. Tachy means fast. Pnea is air. So that is fast air, fast breathing. Tachycardia is heart. So fast heart. Dyspnea is the feeling of difficulty with breathing. You might also become sweaty when you are uh, hypoxemic. But these signs can be difficult to, uh, to diagnose, difficult to gauge, whereas this one is dead easy. You can just, um, you can just check it any time, it's, it's fine. Phew, saturations are still 98. That's good, <laughs> okay, right. Um, altered mental state is another one. So, so when someone becomes very hypoxic, there's not going to be enough oxygen getting to their brain and their brain will not be working properly and they can be confused and eventually they can become unconscious. So um, no reason why you shouldn't test that at home. It's a very simple test to do. Um, you can get these from any any online place. Um, I suppose you get some in some shops. I've never seen them in shops, but online they're a simple thing to order. Very useful. Um, now, j j just um, how we relate this in the clinical situation. So we use these to decide when to give oxygen therapy. So in the past, we used to give oxygen to people that were breathless. Subjective feelings of breathlessness, we used to give them oxygen. This is actually the wrong thing to do. Oxygen is not the treatment for breathlessness, it's the treatment for hypoxemia low levels of oxygen in the blood, which we diagnose with this. If someone's short of breath and it's not caused by hypoxemia, then giving oxygen is not going to help. It will only help if the shortness of breath is caused by low levels of oxygen in the blood, otherwise it won't help. And these are the target saturations we aim for. So for you and me, normally I would like your saturations to be 94 to 98% which is absolutely fine for you, unless you've got chronic lung disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Now these people are chronically short of oxygen, so there we accept 88 to 92 as being the normal levels. So a very simple test you can do at home to measure for oxygen saturations. Now, let's just look at one situation where this could go wrong. So let's imagine you have acute respiratory distress syndrome. So here's your alveoli that we looked at before, and the air is going in and out of these air sacs at the microscopic scale in the lungs. 
very large internal surface area, about 100 meters internal surface area. And what goes on here is called gaseous exchange. So what you have is, is running over very close to this. You'll have a, an arteriole going in there, little vessel going in there. And then this will branch out into thousands of capillaries like this, little blood vessels that curve, actually curve round over the top. So if, that, if that's one of your alveolar air sacs there, the blood vessels actually curve round it like that. You know, they, they, they cover round it like that. And what happens is that deoxygenated blood from the uh, right ventricle comes in here. It goes through here, picks up the oxygen. And as it picks up the oxygen, it becomes bright red blood because the oxyhemoglobin is bright red. And then that's going to drain back towards the left atrium of the heart uh, in the normal venous pulmonary drainage. And all the time the blood's going through, the oxygen is going into the blood like that. And the carbon dioxide is going from the air sacs into the blood. So that is, uh, that is what is happening, this process of gaseous exchange. But the problem is in ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, or pneumonia, for example, these alveoli will fill up with fluid. And therefore the oxygen can't get through to the blood vessels. Asthma is a bit different. Asthma is inflammation more at the level of the small bronchioles up here. So you get swelling and inflammation in the, in the bronchioles, the small blood vessels. That's what causes asthma. So in asthma, the air can't get through to the air sacs. In pneumonia and ARDS, ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, is caused by inflammation in the lungs. Could be caused by a virus, could be caused by trauma, could be caused by inhaling toxins. But the bottom line is the same, the oxygen can't get through. So that means the oxygen saturations in the blood are going to go down, and that is what we call hypoxemia. And that's what we test for with this. So one last look. <laughs> See what we're doing. Ninety-seven, eighty-one. Okay, there you go. So a very simple test you can do at home to measure your uh, levels of blood oxygen.